Okay, welcome everybody. Um, this is the May 16th meeting of the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee. Uh, tonight, at least so far, for our committee members, um, we have myself, Molly Keegan, Bill Dwyer, Amy Fiden, Justin Pelland, and Crystal Jackson. And we also have with us um, a guest this evening, uh, Risa Smithfried from the Hadley Housing Authority. So uh, the first agenda item um, would be approval of the minutes for the February 15th, March 21st, and April 18th meetings. I'll move the approval of those minutes. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Okay, motion made by Bill, seconded by Crystal. Um, all in favor, can you raise your hands for approval? Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and then, so the first agenda item tonight is um, our guest, Risa. Uh, Risa and I had a nice meeting a little while back at the Hadley Housing Authority. Um, and we thought it might be a good idea if um, Risa had the opportunity to share with our committee some um, initiatives or thoughts that uh, the Hadley Housing Authority has been having relative to uh, potential additional housing stock. So, uh, Risa, with that, um, I do have that link that you wanted me to share available, but I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thanks for inviting me. And I'd like to start with a question for you all to just consider, don't have to answer. What does your committee see as the type of housing need in Hadley? Is it multi-use? Is it mixed-use market rate, elderly, disabled, or family housing? And the reason I am asking is that I've got some good news. There is now, uh, m well, there are now multiple pathways for housing authorities. Uh, we call them local housing authorities in the state of Massachusetts to develop housing. And several have. Um, an example is like Cambridge and Medford. One such pathway is... Uh, through the Executive Office for Housing and Livable Communities. And that's, I think you probably all have some sort of a relationship with them because uh, they also have the economic side with the CDCs, et cetera. Um, so it's through the Executive uh, Office for Housing and Livable Communities, which is a cabinet level uh, position that answers only to the governor, uh, they they beefed up something they call the Public Housing Innovation Program uh, and other pathways to developing housing by housing authorities that are specific to housing authorities exist through HUD. All of this is pretty new, um, but since you all, see, I've been watching your your uh, meetings and it seems like you're very interested you've mostly been thinking in terms of of developers and that kind of thing but Hadley Housing Authority could alleviate some of Hadley's housing needs uh, because we have undeveloped land I don't know if you've all been over to the Housing Authority and looked at that but we have undeveloped land that could be used to create more housing uh, and get, it, 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 well, I will say it won't be a fast process, whatever pathway the housing authority chooses to take all of the pathways. And there are multiple pathways require multiple steps. And if more housing is needed in Hadley, though, the had the Hadley housing authority would like to help if the committee is interested in more housing in Hadley, and I'm pretty sure you are. Now is a good opportunity to move the housing authority forward. And one way to help us is through serving as a commissioner on the board. We have a couple of positions open. Um, we're very interested in moving forward to develop more housing. And uh, we could use some people who think in those terms to move the uh, to create more housing in Hadley. So 
Any questions? I have one. Uh, how would we sit down? How can someone sit down with you and discuss the openings that you have available? Um, I would love to. Uh, Molly, can you give Crystal my email address, contact stuff? Absolutely. I would love to talk to you, Crystal. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I can um, email, if, with your permission, I can just send your email to the entire committee afterwards. Oh, please do. Mm -hmm. okay, so I will say right now we have two vacancies on the board. Our, our board has gone from, well, we lost 80% of our board two years ago. Uh, so we've we've been trying to to move forward. It's been difficult because uh, state aided housing is complicated, and the commissioner's job can be complicated. So um, uh, we've got two vacant positions right now. One is a five year term. One is what we call an end of term. It's for one year. There are no candidates on the ballot. Uh, on Tuesday, there no candidates. So we could solve that problem with write-in. So the five-year position is available. I don't know anyone who has, has signed up to, to be a write-in vote for the five-year position. The one-year position, we have a current board member, actually he's our most experienced board member who wasn't going to run again. And now that he sees these possibilities, he's willing to serve for one more term. That's Rich Whitkus. So, you know, everybody could write in Rich for the one-year term on Tuesday. But yes, we do have both of those positions available. And it would it could be solved by write-in vote. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I'll, I'll say, uh, regardless of who fills the seats, um, the question you asked about what kinds of housing you rattled off a whole list. I think the short answer is all of them. Um, but <laughs> yeah. the, the longer answer is the housing production plan and the master plan outline mm -hmm. pretty clear priorities and targets for different types mm -hmm. of housing and housing diversity. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, those are, those are formal documents that should serve as guiding principles for any decisions we make on housing, regardless of personal bias or, you know, this committee's beliefs. So right. um, refer to those documents. I would say whoever, you know, takes this up can probably speak on the committee's behalf, but uh, there's a lot of information in there that I think we've yet to really act upon. That would be brilliant. Uh, we, the the thing, I didn't know this, and I don't think many people do. We we thought because of the Faircloth Amendment, there could be no more units built on housing authority land, and things are opening right up. Uh, and it doesn't have to be some of these other housing authorities like Medford and Chelsea, if you want to Google them and take a look, um, they're not just doing, say, elderly disabled housing or family housing. They're doing mixed use. So, you know, the businesses in the bottom, the apartments on the top, they're making beautiful, beautiful um, uh, developments. And I think Hadley deserves to have nice things, nice housing. And it doesn't have to just be for low income folks. It can be mixed use. There's, there's a whole range of things we could do. And we have all this undeveloped land available. Do you have an idea or can you say where this land is located? It's right here. In fact, just turn into Golden Court off of Middle Street, and uh, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll meet you. Just give me a call or send me an email, and I'll walk the property with you. All right, great. Thank you so much. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Later, if, if you're interested, um, later, our executive director, uh, Pamela Rogers, could come, she had a, a prior engagement she could not get out of. She wanted to come tonight, but... Um, she can get into more detail. She knows more of the ins and outs and the specifics, but I don't think we're at the specifics yet. Not we're yet. Just, Correct. Yeah. And, and we do need more board members who want to move this forward. Okay. Thank you. Risa, you had sent me this link to um, 
this new pathways to create more deeply affordable housing. Is mm -hmm. that something you wanted to refer to tonight or do you want me to send that link to the group as a follow up? Yeah, please send to uh, send it to the group as a follow up. I don't want to take up the time tonight. It's a quick read. It gets a little tiny bit into the weeds, but it'll illustrate what I'm talking about. The only exception is we're in state aided housing. This is state aided housing funded here. And so we have even additional pathways. Uh, the the article I sent you was about pathways through HUD, basically, through that, how to circumvent the Faircloth Amendment, basically, is what it is. Uh, but state-aided housing, we have even additional pathways. And just this past, I believe it was in the past six weeks or so, the executive office sent out another uh, public housing administration notice that is opening up more uh funding capacity. So for instance, all those things that you asked me about, Molly, about um, uh, uh, feasibility studies, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. the Executive Office for Housing and Livable, Livable Communities on application will actually fund all those studies and they require those studies to be done through them. So it's kind of a whole separate system than say a town is used to dealing with. And this would not be a town project. This would be the housing authorities project with the state. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit, we don't have the same kind of requirements the town does. Sometimes I'm pretty sure the requirements that we have to meet are far, far more stringent, but uh, that's why it would take, it's not gonna be quick. It, it it can be difficult, but we can do it. Other housing authorities have, and we sure can. We're one of the very few housing authorities in uh, Western Massachusetts that has, quote, undeveloped land. And we have quite a bit of it. Bill, I'm just um, curious from your perspective on um, planning board, would all of the um, normal zoning requirements that apply to the town in terms of like setback rules and things like that, would they still be applicable to further development on the housing authority property or? Uh, very likely not <laughs> because it's municipal. Uh, it, obviously we'd have to maintain some setbacks, but um, yeah. both the original Golden Court <clears throat> and the family housing on Burke Way were developed pretty much without regard to zoning restrictions. You know, they mm -hmm. they could not have been built as a commercial project. Right. So um, yeah, just for, uh, let me see if I can do this easily. Let's see if I can pull up this. Um, this very generally outlines the Golden Court property. Um, most of the vacant land seems to be on the Burke Way side. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what whether it would lend itself to family housing ver uh, versus senior housing. I know there was a lot of uh, discussion at the time the Burke Way was created about not having the uh, the then directors of the housing authority seem to be terrified that uh, school kids would work would walk down the driveway from Golden Court to get to Burke Way. So that's hence the the chain that's there with <laughs> um, but uh, yeah you definitely do have land in there. Um, so definitely potential. And and notice that the piece between, well, the uh, you can see where it says Golden Court and the eight buildings surrounding that Golden Court. Yeah. So okay, between the Golden Court and the Burke, the first Burke Way building do you, on the other side. Yes. Yeah. That's also some space. Yeah. And of course, all of this, um, basically behind the Burke Way where the two buildings are on the south side of Burke mm -hmm. Way. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm I'm curious, would this uh would this offer an opportunity to maybe redevelop the entire site? I know some of the buildings are in a little bit of a disrepair and you know I'm curious if there's maybe an opportunity to make a you know more efficient uh, new plan versus trying to squeeze in a space in between. That's certainly something to consider. Uh, we are getting way into the weeds, you all, but you all get into the weeds. <laughs> And and we just need to 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 start kind of first steps here. This is very new. It's very it's extremely new for Hadley Housing Authority to think about it, and it's also very new for all has housing authorities in Massachusetts. This is uh, it's been kind of incrementally rolled out and underfunded, as you all I'm sure know. Housing is underfunded. Housing authorities are underfunded started out in, say, 2014, and is incrementally um, improved, but not adequately that housing authorities thought that they could take these things on, uh, th these new, and this would be a big, 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 as you know, project. So, so we'll see. Well, Risa, thank you. Um, you're just Johnny on the spot. I said, you know, try to keep it to 20 minutes and look where we're at. So <laughs> hey, I had my timer going. <laughs> thank you all for inviting me. And I, Crystal, I hope to hear from you and anyone else. Thank you so thank much. You. Enjoy your week. Me. You too. Okay. Thank you. Thanks so much, Risa. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Um, and just for anybody who's viewing this now, after the fact, I just want to let everybody know that um, Mark Howard, as a committee member, has joined our meeting at this point. Uh, he joined during that discussion. So, okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, next agenda item I have is UMass. So uh, if you recall back in April, we had talked about the fact that the students were going to have their final presentations. And um, that did happen. Uh, so this is the the uh, project by the landscape architecture architecture and regional planning teams at the university. Um, so they did their final projects, um, obviously in advance of the semester ending. Um, I was able to go. Uh, Justin was present. Uh, Mark Dunn attended from the planning board. Carolyn Brennan, um, the town administrator. And uh, Justin, you want to give your thoughts about it? Sure. Um, There's a lot of great work represented by the students. Uh, a lot of critical thinking around land use practices, and um, you know, one of the big takeaways for me, anyway. And I, you know, I do this for a living, so this is interesting to be surprised by it. But the size of the site, you know, 33 acres with however many millions of square feet of parking, uh, it was remarkable to me how many housing units the students were able to get in a diversity from young professional all the way up to senior housing, they were able to get a lot of units on that site and still maintain something like, I don't know if I had to guess, it was between like 50 and 70% of the site as open green space. So it's kind of a great model to sort of point to, to say, you know, when we're talking about infill developments along Route 9, how much can be accomplished in a relatively small area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a, a tremendous amount of, um, creativity it, and it, um, one of the ones that fascinated me the most um, was uh, one of the teams took uh, really wanted to think about Hadley you know and what what Hadley represents you know as as students here uh, in at the university you know what what resonates with them when they when they are driving through Hadley and um, one of the teams came up with I'm going to call it a kind of a, a, a tobacco barn motif, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to use the right architectural terms, obviously, but a kind of a theme. I guess a theme is the best way to put it. And so all of their design was trying to capture the flow of tobacco barns in terms of um, how the light moves through, uh, airflow from front to back. So in their designs for the housing, you know, they had kind of elongated peaked roofs that might resemble a barn structure, thinking that that might tie into the the, the landscape in a, in a little bit of a, of a better way. So, I mean, they really, you know, as we said at the outset, 
we didn't want to put constraints on them because obviously we're not zoned, um, you know, to do any of this right now. But, um, you know, again, the, that, that level of creativity coming through really struck me as well. So I thought it was a great project. Um, I don't know, Bill, did um, Mark Dunn have anything to say to your group about it or? Uh, let's see. We met last uh, Tuesday. And um, no, he did not mention anything. Well, I think uh, now that I think about it, wasn't it on Wednesday, Justin? Yeah, it was. Oh, so he was, okay. he was there the day after your meeting. You'll probably yeah. hear about it in the next one. Yeah. 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 Um, so the aftermath of that is uh, the uh, professors, the, the the leadership team said that they're basically going to bundle uh, those presentations in, in a format so that we can actually um, view that in our group. You know, we'll be able to email that around to um, our committee, the planning board, select board. Um, they're happy to have you know, some further presentation on it. And, and Justin, I think they, that we were talking about that, right? That maybe there could be some sort of convening where we would have the opportunity to, to walk through and just talk about these things. Again, it just to get people's creative juices flowing about what the possibilities are um, along Route 9. So uh, I guess, more to come on that. And then the other thing that was loud and clear was um, they thought that this had gone extremely well and said that they were really excited to continue the partnership with Hadley. Um, and they're happy to be in conversation with us about any further projects we might be interested in working on now that we kind of got the, the kinks out of this one. So anything else on? that topic. Okay. Oh, I thought Mark had his hand up. I keep doing that. I leave my cursor over at the <laughs> Zoom box. <laughs> um, okay, and then so <clears throat> I guess the next series of topics, um, 40R, Smart Growth Forum, Affordable Housing Planning Board Projects. <clears throat> so a lot of a lot of meat there. Uh, 40R, I guess I know Justin, you're on the committee, the 40R committee. And yeah. have you met at this point more than once or? Uh, we had our first meeting, uh, I wanna say it was a week and a half ago. Um, basically it was uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission kind of walking us through an overview of 40R districts and how they are formed and kind of gave us a you know bit of a download on that. Um, we were able to ask some questions, but it was a really great discussion. Um, the one thing for this committee uh, is that the 40R process uh, requires two public engagement sessions, the first being in June. And I had asked the question um, with regards to the forum that we've been trying to put together, if there was a possibility of combining those agendas since there's a significant amount of overlap. Uh, it sounded like there might be a possibility to do that, but I'm I'm not clear yet on the path forward, uh, obviously June is around the corner. So uh, I think I'll keep my ear to the ground, but it, it may be an opportunity for us to engage more directly and sort of bring that agenda to the public. Yeah, as I, great. Yeah, as I think about it, um, having it as part of a focus plan going towards a goal, the 40R really seems to be a, um, a force multiplier for what we were gonna be putting on. Yeah, I would agree with that. Right, because then there's something tangible as opposed to, um, I wouldn't necessarily put it this way, but I've, I've heard the phrase, you know, kind of pie in the sky, right? Just kind of an open, Yeah. not that there's anything wrong with those types of conversations, but um, I, I would certainly agree. I, and I'm, I'm excited that the 40R is moving, seemingly moving along as, um, actually going to use the word quickly <laughs> as it is, even though everything takes a lot of time. But Well, but as, it, as yeah. you can imagine, having something ready for the May 2025 annual town meeting is already getting tight. Mm -hmm. 
uh, a project, uh, a bylaw of that scope um, for a bylaw of that scope a year is hardly enough time to pull it together. Mm -hmm. So uh, fingers crossed. I do have the slide deck from um, the, from the Kyle uh, from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission put together. So I will forward that to, I don't know if I can forward to the committee as a whole or if I just forward it to you, Molly, and you can pass it out. Yeah, I, I think um, any of the emails I send it to group, I think I think if you reply to that, it would go, okay. go out to everybody. Okay, I'll try that. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. And um, Amy, Crystal, Mark, any, any other thoughts about possibly doing that combination? I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. I agree. I, I agree with the whole and the project and so forth and the information that's being provided. I, I was waiting for an update at this of this significance and I think this is it going in the right direction. Great. I think it's a great idea. We'd combine it with the presentation we were gonna do, which was gonna have two, um, two sessions anyway, right? And you need two sessions for the 40R. So that sounds great. Yeah, I mean, just be clear. I think the content of our original agenda was, was pretty broad scope, right? It was an educational session. I think there's there's a lot of overlap with the 40R district, but I think the engagement sessions for 40R are, are intended to kind of draw feedback from the public specific to a district over, or an overlay district. Um, that said, I think, you know, because there's a lot of overlap, we have an opportunity to use that as an education session as well. But Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is going to be leading these, as I understand it. So um, I'll be deferring to them, uh, but trying to get some of the topics or talking points included as we move forward. And, and anticipating some of the questions that might come up at, at those sessions, Justin, in large part was why we were trying to assemble a team of, of um you know, the, the police and fire chiefs, DPW superintendent to be able to respond to those. So maybe we can still try to, from a scheduling standpoint, um, have some overlap with their attendance as well, even if they're not presenting just to be available as experts. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Assuming that there's the ability to incorporate that into the agenda that Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is putting together. Um, yeah. I think we're uh, next meeting is next week, so we'll have an opportunity to talk in more detail about it with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's understood that they're driving this, um, but anything we can do. Or more specifically, the uh, the state is driving it because there's a, vo a very formal series of steps that we have to take to be considered eligible for 40R. So... Um, PVPC is familiar with the steps, but um, I want to be sure that the responsibility or blame, as the case may be, is placed with the um, whatever the new acronym is. Uh, well, and that, that's actually a good point you raised, Bill, because if memory serves me correctly, the reason we were well, driver because uh, behind us doing the housing forum was because that was the next step coming out of the housing production plan yep. so that if we wanted to apply for certain types of grants, et cetera, we, ne we needed to be checking off those boxes as well. So we'd want to look into if we do wind up combining, do we get um, you know credit, if you will, for yep. both or do we still need to do something separately? And since Pioneer Valley Planning Commission worked on both the long range plan update and the housing production plan from two years ago, um, they should be comfortable knitting all of those together. And the mm -hmm. fact that we have done those, taken those steps previously should help our application going forward. Agreed. Okay, so more to, more to come on that then. Nothing else, uh, and, and that was actually, you know, um, so uh, this the smart growth that um, that presentation is available on Hadley Media, correct, Bill? 
the actual meeting of the smart growth committee mm -hmm. i believe so they did record it so i'm assuming it's available or will be when it's posted if it's not already yep okay so, so that might be something to for everybody to take a look at yep and then i separately have just the slide deck that kyle presented i mean it'll it'll be there up on the screen in the background of the meeting but as a separate uh, resource, it's uh, very helpful, I think. You can study the slides at your own pace. Okay, thank you. And uh, Justin, who wound up being on the committee? So it's Mark Dunn, yourself, uh, Randy Iser. Randy, um, there were a handful of people on Zoom that I'm forgetting now. Uh, what is it, Deborah? Andrew, Andrew Gnodick is the an at-large member mm -hmm. and yep. he was previously on the H housing production plan committee mm -hmm. um we're looking for one member or they are looking for one member from the conservation commission uh kayla was going to raise that at their meeting last night i think it was or tuesday uh, tuesday um and um i believe there's someone from the housing authority as well or Council on Aging, I'm sorry. Council on Aging, yeah, that's the person I can't remember. Okay, great. And I believe Mark has you meeting first and third Mondays. So yep. it's a more, a more aggressive than some other committees are doing by meeting twice a month. Okay, um, anything else on, on the 40 hour smart growth or the housing forum? If not, uh, the next agenda item I had was affordable housing. Um, I know the, the affordable housing trust, affordable housing trust trustees, I was gonna say committee, but it's the trustees um, are intended to meet in June, I believe. Um, so no, nothing from that group to report until that meeting. And Bill, I was curious. I still have never heard that the state figures were formally updated for the census or, or were they? Um, I haven't checked recently. Okay. I know everybody was, was floating around an 11 point something percent, but it hadn't been formal, you know. Yeah, there, there seemed to be a sense of what the number was going to be, but that particular data point had not been teased out from the census the last time I looked, but I, I don't think I looked well, probably not since the um, uh, the whole um, issue of the affordable uh, the CDC or Valley CDC. Right. Uh, so it's probably been about a year now. I'm sure yeah. it's probably there. And I'm I'm almost positive that it was May of 2023 that everybody thought it was going to be published. So we're almost a year out from that. So, or we are a year out from that. So, okay. Okay. Um, anything else on affordable housing in particular anybody wants to bring up tonight? Amy? I was wondering where we are with the um, the group. I, I think it's the mountain, the mountain group that was going to be coming off. Um, oh, the, mount, the Mountain View apartments? Mountain View apartments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have, have we been in discussion? Is there, what what's, what's happening with that? We know. Uh, I'm not aware that they came off the rolls. Are you, Bill? No, no, uh, but in the future. They, they I mean, they were the yeah. next ones to be happening. So, and I think that one's coming up sooner than later. So I. I, I did hear, and I, I forget exactly the context that uh, because it is owned by I forget who the owner is. Uh, uh, Hap. 
um, way, wayfinders. Yeah, I, I think they're called wayfinders now. Yeah, whoever it is, because of because that is an entity that is devoted to providing affordable housing, that they might not be looking to convert, and it's unclear that they could convert out of affordable housing uh, because current zoning does not support multiple dwellings. So um, it's a good point though, Amy, I mm -hmm. probably should uh, mention it to Carolyn Brennan and uh, remind her this is on her plate. Yeah, and I, and I think, um, I, I think that there's some of the issues that we had with them uh, that existed between them and the town. I believe that they have been resolved. Um, but again, uh, to, to Bill's point, I need to go back to Carolyn and, and double check as well. So hopefully we can get it, give an update at the next meeting. Do you know if it will change because right now, like Bill said, that they would, we are not zoned for um, for uh, multiple uh, units. So would a 40R or any of these um, changes in what we're talking about here be affecting that in whatsoever? I'm not sure where that property is, but. Uh, it's over by Stop and Shop. When you pull in the driveway on your left. Oh, right. Um, well, I guess it depends on where the district is drawn, but I don't know if 40R has a mechanism to grandfather in non-conforming properties or non-conforming uses. Um, that's an interesting question. I think, you know, if it would, if it was in the 40R's district and it was, you know, conforming, it could be by right at that point, but I don't know. Bill, do you have any thoughts on the zoning side? I, I don't, I haven't. Um... It, it certainly isn't in an area that we were initially looking at as a potential 40-yard district. The, the initial 40-yard district that was discussed with PVPC and the planning board in consultation with the state was a combination basically from Lowe's to Home Depot on the north side of Route 9 and Mill Valley Road to um, the to the easterly edge of the mountain of the Hampshire Mall property on the southerly side of Route Nine. And I know our sense at the planning board sense at the time was that that was too big, that it would make more sense to start a little smaller, see how it worked in practice before we started expanding it. So the Mount, Mountain View Apartments would not fall within that uh, district as originally discussed. Yeah, I'll, I'll add, Bill, that the um, if you look at the slide deck from the uh, 40-hour committee meeting, there's a slide with, a, I think there are two zones or zone boundaries drawn on it. One was, I think, like the minimum and one was a ideal or maximized, I forget. Um, the minimum one came out of a discussion where the state is requiring more expansive districts in order to approve the applications. So I think that that might have changed from when the planning board reviewed this initially. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll do a little bit more homework there and, and um, find out more about that particular property um, as Amy's requested. Uh, if nothing else on the affordable housing, uh, planning board projects. One of the asks at a previous meeting was, uh, I think all of us are recognizing that the planning board's got a lot going on right now in terms of uh, projects coming in front of them. And Bill, we were hoping maybe you could just run us through, you know, we know that there's the the storage and and you know what else might be out there so what we have approved uh most recently is the um 
self-storage on South Maple Street, the Chase Bank branch on the corner of Route 9 and South Maple Street. That should begin construction anytime now, within the month. And the uh, uh, redevelopment of uh, Belize Subaru, Steve Lewis Subaru into um, a more comprehensive and modern building. So those those are approved. Uh, so two are new construction. One is a redevelopment. Uh, what we have been introduced to is there's a, a commercial building proposed to be constructed in uh, behind the CrossFit building off of the north side of Route 9. Uh, I believe it's going to be a roofing company that's going to be going in there, roofing and siding company. Um, Barry Roberts owns that parcel in there and has multiple. That's where Wagging Tails is and uh, some other uh, operations, other buildings, other businesses. Um, Mr. Roberts, busy, busy man. Uh, has acquired the former Rockies and um, the rent uh, the rental company site on Route Nine. Um, he initially came in to talk to us about uh, just converting it to general business purposes, renting out the space. But uh, just uh, yesterday, we learned that. Um, he may be, he's reached a deal with Belief Subaru so that uh, that space will be the temporary site of Belief Subaru while they are renovating, reconstructing the uh, Steve Lewis Subaru property. So they're going to come into our meeting on Tuesday night to talk about, about that. As long as there are no exterior alterations, we don't think we'll have a big issue with it, but uh, that would simplify the renovation plan. And uh, we had a conversation with uh, the new owners uh, of the Stop and Shop Plaza who are interested in putting a self-storage facility. They have about 19 acres out and back of which maybe five to seven acres are actually usable and the rest is um, wetlands. Yeah, they're proposing uh, self-storage out there uh, adjacent to the cell tower that's back there. Bill, does that abut um, Belva's swamp that the town owns? Uh, I don't think, I, it, it may, I believe it may. Mm -hmm. But that's not where they are. Let me see if I could just pull up what they are proposing. And then, then the other question I had when you were talking about the old Rockies site, if if um, a, a deal is made uh, with Belize, uh, that sounds like it's temporary in nature. Yes. And yes. presuming that that would go on for some amount of time when Belize no longer needs the property and the owner wants to repurpose it, is that site under consideration for 40R or is that outside the, the current I thing? I think it might, it might be in the area because I, I think the area from the Mill Valley Road intersection was uh, considered for that. So it might be in the area, but... Um, you know, we don't know what um uh, don't know what Mr. Roberts is going to choose to do. So mm -hmm. here is the stop and shop plaza, which you're all familiar with, I'm sure. Back here is the cell tower, which you probably don't even know is there unless you've looked for it. 
and the proposed location for the self-storage is in this general area. This, as you can see, is crisscrossed with wetlands. Let me see. Uh, this uh, parcel up here, 24-2, is Town of Happy property. Okay, yeah. And, and then there's a landlocked, couple of landlocked parcels back here. And then that is the former stadium storage, which is now something else up there. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, the idea is, I just have to figure out which way to, yeah. The idea for the self storage is back here. Now, uh, the Chase Bank branch is going to squeeze itself into this corner adjacent to all these. And because who can have too many banks in town? Uh, Bank of America is proposing, they haven't filed anything yet. Uh, they are proposing to demolish the building that I always think of it as the Potbelly Deli that goes back a ways. More recently, it was an optical uh, shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, the AT and T store, I think it was AT and T. Yeah. And this is the um. This has not been updated, but uh, this is LL Bean, and there's a strip mall in there, and there's the freestanding building over here, and that's what's going to be demolished for a Bank of America branch. Now, we also have the former People's Bank branch, which is down here, which remains undeveloped. No one seems to be uh, interested in a 25-year-old bank building, which says something. I don't know what. Well, that um, People's Bank paid to build the building, but it was a land lease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when that land lease ended... People's walked away from it. So I would imagine if anybody's going to do anything, you know, they'd want to demolish it. But again, it would be a land lease. Yep. So numbers may so, not be working in the current environment. So even though there are multiple tax parcels here, by and large, most of this is owned by WS Development. Um, I'm sorry, it's just yeah, WS, and that is three South Maple, five South Maple LLC. I think that was WS too, and that corner is WS, as is the Mountain Farm Small proper. So that's um, those are the biggies. Um, there's a constant diet of things that uh, they're adaptive reuse of properties that if, if it does not involve new construction, we usually issue waivers of site plan approval because it doesn't change the contours of the land. Um, so we've had a few of those come in. Uh, new businesses going in to different places, but the, the those are the, the biggies that are pending now. I have a question. I did notice there is a moving or storage business that is being built on South Maple Street, I believe that is, going yes. past Walmart. It's ideal Movers. Oh, Ideal Movers. Okay. So I just wanted to know if the same person who that's going to build the moving, the storage is, the storage in back of Stop and Shop. Is it the same owners as the no. one being built now? Okay. No, okay. Uh, that is being brought forward by the owners of the, the plaza. Oh, they want, okay. They want to maximize their use of the property, mm -hmm. the available property. Okay. Makes sense from a business standpoint. Exactly. They have not, they have not filed anything yet. 
Thank you. Any other questions for Bill? Okay, thanks for the update, Bill. And uh, see, then the next topic I had, um, Justin had made a suggestion at a previous meeting of talking about um, either, you know, utilizing the town website or setting up a website for the group. Um, I was reminded of it when I was doing the minutes <laughs> um, and realized we really hadn't uh, had any further conversation about it. So I didn't know if anybody else had been thinking about it. Um, you know, I know uh, on the town side, uh, the, the topic of, about, you know, trying to um, improve traffic um, and the use of the town website has come up again. Uh, usual talking point we have is we don't have the resources right now to, to really um, prioritize that, you know, but that said, um, no matter what happens on, on Tuesday at the election on the, the 21st, we know that the composition of the board will be changing because Joyce is, um, has retired from the board. So, um, you know, that's one seat that will be available and then we'll see what happens with the other, with the other seat. So I guess those priorities can, can change, you know, depending, depending what happens then. But I mean, at the moment, that's kind of where we're at. Um, so I think in the absence of, you know, finding somebody willing to volunteer to build something like that, we may be. Well, I ha did have a reason today to uh, I want to get some information about the banner committee. And mm -hmm. I saw that uh, there is a tab for that on the select board page. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, there you can add materials to it. Uh, we're having a discussion about uh, uh, apparently our planning board page was edited without our input when we converted, when we changed providers. Right, that was quite a few years ago now, yeah. It was, and it we, yeah. just is something I never happened to go to very often, but um, we had a fairly detailed, you know, just a list of who's on the planning board and when their terms expire. And that was in the prior version we didn't ask for any changes, but it's not in the current version. So um, uh, Jennifer has authorized Kayla to access the site to, uh, and I'm not sure, we're, we're still talking about what we want to have up there. And we have links to the zoning map and the zoning bylaw and long range plan and the like. So um, I think it's fine to do it within the town website <clears throat> um, maybe you just negotiate with uh, the select board office to give someone authority to make make changes to that page. I think I believe that can be done. I don't know for sure. I think so too. I think that was one of the features of this particular um, framework that you could you could isolate permissions um, fairly narrowly. So. Uh, yeah, let me let me reach out to Jennifer, and I'll be seeing quite a bit of her over the next couple of weeks. So <laughs> I'll ask. I mean, I think that's a logical starting point. You know, try to do the basic before we get elegant. And at least we can point people in that direction. I, I do want to yeah. say that because I, I had talked to uh, at the select board meeting and I forget when now, last October or something about this issue. And Bill, I didn't realize that the planning board wasn't even aware, but the planning board page is one of the pages that I was reacting to when I made those statements, because I think you were the only person listed on it. And uh, you know, it, it brought this question to mind of like, how do we communicate information to the public? How do we communicate meetings and you know uh, all the various things that would increase public engagement are not present on the website. And so I, I think more than just updating it to make sure the information is there, we have to have some kind of process for you know, 
monitoring it and and periodically refreshing it and making sure that if there's a document that it's it's up to date and if there's a you know a form that it has the right information in it like, i don't know who in in the town is doing that but it feels like that's kind of the biggest gap between us and the residents is that there's no conduit for information to flow to them and the information that does flow is usually not complete or inaccurate or outdated yeah and un unfortunately justin um they when the website originally um you know bill's referring to a. Uh, um, we bought, and I can't remember what it was called, town, doesn't have, um, whatever the, the old website was, um, we went ahead and, and authorized the purchase of a, of a new platform, right? And so there was a project to go through and convert what had been on the old website to the new website. Um, and Jennifer uh, Sanders James did a lot of if not most of that work, I think um, Jessica Spanknable, the town clerk, played a key role there because she had a lot of the previous, you know, town meeting um, warrants and all of that that needed to be ported over. But the challenge we have is that there's no webmaster per se, right? If that's even still what you call people that do that, so there, there's nobody who's charged with or held held accountable to or or provided direction um, other than Jennifer. So basically Jennifer does it when she can in her part time. You know, so if I see something um, and like, hey, this isn't displaying correctly, she'll be like, okay, and she'll get on it and fix it. So to your point, I think in order for it to be an effective communication tool, somebody really needs to own it. Um, and that's what we don't have right now. So I, I agree with you. Um, communication is a priority. There have been some suggestions recently to, um, you know, even as recently as last night's meeting, um, but everybody's got a different, different opinion on how to communicate with the public. Uh, uh, so at any rate, I, th I think that there's more to come on that, but I appreciate people keeping that front and center for the board uh, because we need to do something and it, and it needs to be prioritized. Um, and this year came came and went because other things knocked it out, just like a lot of other, of other things, you know? So um, I'm, I'm on board with prioritizing it, but yeah. right now yeah, you'll have your staff. I understand. I'll um, I'll stand on my soapbox for just a little bit more and just say that it's a matter of priorities, right? Like if we can, if we can vote to put whatever it was, two hundred fifty thousand dollars towards restoring a historic building, we can vote to put money towards a website and maintaining it. So I, I think uh, obviously we'll see how the elections play out next week, but uh, I think this should be an agenda item for the select board, and it should be something that gets actually discussed rather than talked about as like, oh, we just don't have somebody for it. You know, if that's our priority, we should put somebody on it. And I, I don't know if that comes with a cost or if that's a person in town who can take that on as part of their role. But this is, I think, one of the biggest issues we have right now is engagement is not present. And I think that's a, a failing of the systems in place for the communication. So that said, I'll step down from my soapbox and no, take that, it back. Yeah, no, that's that's okay. And um yeah, and I want to be careful because I, I don't want to get outside of open meeting law and get get away from the, the topic of the website, but I, I don't think we are. I think we're talking about using the website for appropriate communication. Um, and I, I can just tell you, if you listen to the select board meeting um, last night, there were two agenda items. One had to do with um, possible changes of, of, of staffing at town hall. Um, and specifically focusing on what isn't getting done and, and how can we um, smartly make the next hire um, bridge some of those pieces. Um, and then the second thing that came up was specifically about enhanced communication with the public and the idea of doing uh, podcasts on a trial basis. So we're, you know, we'll, we'll see where those things go. Um, and, and then I'll stop. So. <laughs>
Um, okay, Crystal, I know you've got to go. So uh, the last thing is uh, any future agenda items? Honestly, okay. I think you can just keep the agenda pretty much the way it is today. That'll oh, all be wow. relevant next month. Yeah. Okay. Well, if anybody does have anything, they can shoot me an email in the meantime, and I'll get it on. Okay. Thanks, Crystal. Enjoy your next meeting. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, too. Bye-bye. Hey, uh, Bye. sorry, Molly, real quick. Uh, yep. This came up on the, the 40 hour committee meeting, but are we required to do like a formal motion to adjourn and roll call votes and all that stuff. I, I'm not sure of the, this committee's purview. Yeah, and that's why um, at the beginning of it, one of the things uh, I had mentioned previously is somebody pointed out that <clears throat> I wasn't announcing who, specifically who from the committee was on so that the public would know. Um, and then we re-voted your, your appointment to the 40R. Um, at the, at the last meeting to, to correct that because we hadn't voted it appropriate, you know, the appropriate way in the prior meeting. So I was just about to ask if anybody would like to make a motion to adjourn. We can also do a, what's called a self roll call. Yeah. So uh, I will make a motion to adjourn. Is there I'll a second? second? Okay. So then, made by Bill, seconded by Justin. So the anyway. self roll call kind of goes like Bill, yes. Yep. Oh, we just, yes. oh, that's it. Okay. Use your Justin. name. Justin, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Crystal, yes. Molly, yes. Mark, Mark, yes. All right. Okay. That's so much easier. All right. Yes. Later, everybody. See you next month. Thanks. Thank Take you. care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.